things have started to break down, where, where would you trace things back to? You could probably trace them back all the way to the end of the Middle Ages. You know, even the Renaissance started to show some signs of things kind of uh, crumbling. But it, obviously, the fruits weren't there yet. And uh, I would say that things really started accelerating during the Enlightenment, hmm. where in this desire to limit the world to reason and to, uh, to kind of scientific progress, that is when, you know, things started to break apart. And so in, in this kind of high point of the power of the West, we re already saw that it was it was already coming apart. And so now we see the fruits today um, as we watch Europe kind of you know, break down and we watch America break down. And mm -hmm. and it's just we're just seeing it happen before our very eyes. You know, people who argued for it at, you know, at the end of the 19th century that said this is happening. They were, it was hard to convince people at that time. But now everybody sees it. So everybody has that sense. Mm. We've had uh, Tom Holland on the channel. I know uh, you've spoken to him uh, as well on your channel. Obviously, his, his big book, Dominion, um, speaks about so much of this. I guess he would see that the seeds of that revolution uh, that was happening that, that eventually gave rise to the Enlightenment and that sort of thing was kind of inherent to Christianity. And I, I guess he comes from a kind of a Latin Christendom, um, Protestant English kind of uh, approach to things. Um, do, do, you, do you see things the same way? No, I think that's probably like my biggest disagreement with Tom. And I, you can see it if you listen to the interview, you can see that I'm kind of poking at him in that particular area. Uh, I, I think that what we see in Christianity is we see a proper hierarchy, right? We, we see a proper relationship with what is above and what is below. That is that what is above is there to love and to care for that which is below. And then in response to that, then that which is below submits and obeys that which is above. And I think that that's the proper, that's what St. Paul uh, describes to us when he talks about the head and the body in terms of uh, the family, but also in terms of Christ and the church. And I think that it's like, you can see that the side effect of Christianity or kind of Christianity going away from itself is when it starts to look more like a revolution where that which is below wants to take power from that which is above. But mm -hmm. as soon as that starts to happen, you have this accelerated revolution, mm -hmm. you know, because you lose your legitimacy. And you see that in all the stories, like it's there in ancient Greek stories, you know, where when you kill the father, then your son is going coming after you. So you either have to kill your son or, or get killed by your son. And so there's this kind of revolutionary wheel that starts to roll and then it's very difficult to stop it. Mm. Could there be an argument, though, that um, much of what we've seen has actually been the seeding of power from above? So something like Magna Carta is, you know, the, the king wanting to grant powers to those under him and reformatio happening in sort of the 11th century in, in Latin Christendom. And um, is, is there a sense in which there can be uh, a very Christian sense of revolution that is the Christ-like giving up of power? I, I think that you could... I wouldn't say maybe not the giving up of power, but at least the exercising of power in a way that recognizes the amen of the people, right? Mm -hmm. So like in the Orthodox, I'm Orthodox, in the Orthodox tradition, you have this sense that you need the, the clergy to, to say the, the liturgy, but you need the people in the church to say amen. If there's no amen, there's no sacrament. Like if there's no answer. And so this response, this like proposition and response is this, uh, to my vision, the proper way in which hierarchy should function. And so, yes, indeed, a king should, even to empower his own people, to, to cede some of the power to the places where it can, it can so that it kind of kind of comes up. But I don't, I don't think that democracy is necessarily a Christian thing. And the people mm -hmm. are going to really not necessarily <laughs> like me for that. Uh, although I do think that in the modern world, democracy is the best solution to the modern problems. Like, I definitely mm -hmm. don't want to live in a... A communist or fascist state, but I don't think that it's something that's necessarily within Christianity. You see, you see hierarchy all, you see communion and hierarchy, you know, from the beginning.